Hey there folks, my name is Matt, and on behalf of Hackaday, I wanted to reach out to you to share with you an interview I got to do with a very interesting gentleman, a guy by the name of Mr. Ivan Goddard. And I'm not sure if you remember, but a few weeks back we had done a piece on the Mill CPU. Well, Mr. Goddard is part of the founding team over at Out of the Box Computing, and they're the guys that are responsible for the Mill CPU architecture. So go ahead and have a listen. What does a mill CPU mean in terms of impact to the power budget of, of a system that might implement it? The mill internally works very much like a conventional DSP. Um, we have advances on it, but in terms of where it spends its power, a very large amount of it goes into actual functional units, adders, multipliers, um, access to cash, things of that nature, the same things that a DSP does. Where our advantage is over a conventional out-of-order superscaler, the x86s and power PCs of the world, is that they actually spend rather little of their power budget on those functions. They spend nearly all of their power budget figuring out what they're going to do next, keeping track of everything, moving things around, and getting ready to do something, and then finally they do an ad. We've gotten rid of all of that. Um, as a result, our, um, while we can compare um, our projected power numbers, and these are projected, we're in SIM only, we do not actually have, have um, something that we can actually measure. Um, our projected numbers we can compare against the kind of numbers that, that currently available DSP chips have, and we scale. Um, you know, delta a few percent, but it, but but it scales. But if you compare those against a, um, a conventional superscaler, um, it's ten percent of the power. Not only for us, but for Texas Instruments too. Um, so there's where the power budget difference makes. The the architecture has eliminated the great majority of the actual power consuming parts of a conventional architecture. But what's the potential for the mill architecture in in the space like in a space like cryptanalysis or cryptography? Well, analysis a fair amount, but actual crypto and decrypt things, you're better off with an ASIC because it is a well-established algorithm and uh, the ASICs exist and they will always be better than any programmable solution, us included. Um, on the other hand, analysis is a different story. Um, there you're not attempting to follow an existing crypto standard, you're attempting to figure out what he's doing. Um, where the mill especially shines is in uh, programs which are very heavily, con flow of control heavy, um, a very heavy memory heavy, um, rather than algorithmically heavy in the sense of massive floating point. If your program would run on a GPU, you're probably better using a GPU than us. The kinds of things that we're really good on is income taxes, artificial intelligence, um, the AI side of games, not the graphics side of games. The GPU works just fine for, for doing triangles. Um, but, well, the reason why most modern games are full of uh, zombies is because the AI is too dumb to do anything except zombies. <laughs> and we offer an alternative in that. Um, the, uh, yes, w we do do a very good job with, with massive floating point and array processing where our numbers are, are much better on a per power, per cost or area of chip basis. But um, there's alternatives. And because we're fundamentally, we've got the price point and power point of a DSP, we're not really that much better than the DSPs that you can get from Texas Instruments for DSP workloads. Sure. What's different is that we can apply those to workloads that the DSPs cannot be applied to. Uh, okay, sure, sure. What does it take to actually create the mill architecture? Well, we realized we were going to be a family for fairly early on, I mentioned this. And if you're going to be a family, this means you're going to be producing a lot of different chips. And we have enough experience amongst us to know that attempting to do chips on an individual million monkeys basis the way it is usually done 
is absolutely hopeless for a startup. A startup might be able to do custom layout for one chip, but not for 10 across the family. Consequently, we did elected to take a completely different tack. The mill is based on a specification and dynamically generated facility. Um, each individual mill core, um, take a gold, for example, which is a moderately high-end family member. The specification of that lists the components which go in it. It's got so many adders, it's got so many multipliers, the cache is this big, the belt, which is covered in one of our videos, is so big. And this is just a bunch of specifications. These can be mixed and matched, configured in a different way. At the low end, a tin um, is got a quarter of, of the facilities of, of a gold, but it's built the same way. The specification is two or three pages of C++ code um, compiled, and then in the context out of that, we build the sim for that chip. The same occurs for the instruction set. Um, the instructions are not defined. No one has ever done manual layout of bits in an instruction. We simply say, well, here are all the operations and here are all the flavors that they can be varied with. And um, here are the functional units that, are, that the specification set is going to go in it. And these are the operations this functional unit is able to do. And we just collect all of the operations that across all those functional units that can be done and build mechanically in software a, an, an, um, an optimal bit level instruction set that nobody ever looks at because we are mechanically from that building an assembler, a compiler back end, a sim, and most interestingly driving the Verilog generators that build the hardware. Uh, interesting. This has been working for several years. One of our upcoming talks will be a live demo in which I'll ask the audience to specify me a new operation. I will add it and set the thing to working and in 20 minutes we'll have a processor running in simulation that contains that operation. Wow. So it's all parameterized? Completely. Top to bottom. Wow. That's extraordinary. I mean, just that technology is a problem. Right? I mean, there's, yeah. there's, a, there's a product in that capacity. Well, other vendors have attempted to do a mix and match mm -hmm. sort of architecture, but always at a much larger granularity and never at the instruction set level. Sure. Um, and it works. It works real well. And th that, that presentation is probably... Well, I guess it will be December, maybe early January, when, when we'll be doing that. With the, uh, we, ha we have to organize the location and timing of, of these, and sure. uh, so I can't give you a, a definite time. Sure.